A few weeks ago, my husband Bryce decided to build us this really awesome 30 foot by four foot storage loft up above in the headspace. It gives us 120 square feet of storage space, which is fantastic. And it's about 10 feet up above our heads, so it's not in the way when we're building. The only problem is it's a little hard to access from the ground. So today we decided to build a simple wood staircase that would make going up and down from the loft a little bit easier. However, what is not simple is the fact that we had two pretty specific criteria that we wanted to meet. We wanna be able to easily access the full 30 foot span of the loft area. So we need the ladder to be able to slide back and forth, kind of like one of those old school library ladders. Additionally, we both use this shop a lot and I'm frequently taking photos against that back wall. So I need the ladder to be able to fold up or move out of the way when it's not in use. Up until now, the only way to access the loft was to use a long extension ladder. I'm sure it's perfectly safe, but I'm just not a big fan of extension ladders. Also, they're difficult to use if your hands are full and you're trying to carry something up or down. Even though the requirements for the ladder to both slide and fold were a design challenge to say the least. Keep watching to learn how we made a rolling folding loft staircase. It's kind of like if a drawbridge and a library ladder had a baby. This video is sponsored by The Home Depot and DAP Products. The first thing we needed to do was to take accurate measurements of the loft so we knew how large we needed to make our staircase. We measured from the top vertically going down and we also made a mark on the floor to indicate how far out we wanted the staircase to reach. Once we had the total length of the staircase figured out, around 14 feet, the first step of the build was to fabricate the metal rail, which the ladder would slide back and forth on. This gave us the chance to try out our new Ryobi brushless cordless angle grinder. This angle grinder is part of the new Ryobi HP line, which means it packs the long lasting power of a brushless motor and a smaller, lighter weight compact package. Ryobi did a great job of including some upgraded design features in this model, like tool-free wheel and guard adjustment for quick and easy changes. I can easily switch between four and a half inch cutoff wheels, grinding discs, flap discs, whatever I need quickly and easily. Once the one inch black pipe gas line that we had selected to use for the rail was cut to size, Bryce used the angle grinder to grind a flat spot every three feet so we could mount standard heavy duty handrail brackets. They're the type of brackets that you can easily find in the hardware section of Home Depot and that you would use to mount a wood handrail to the wall in your house. We secured the brackets to the black pipe using three quarter inch long self-tapping screws. All the handrail brackets are now attached to the pipes, so it is time to get them up on the loft. We used a chalk line to mark where the rail was going to be located on the outer TJI. To help ensure that the TJI wouldn't flex and to give us a better surface to mount to, we added two by six blocks between the top and bottom plates. Next, it was time to turn our attention to the wood staircase itself. In order for the ladder to be able to fold, the long side rails of the staircase needed to be in two pieces. I used my miter saw to cut all four side rail pieces from two by six framing lumber. Once the side rail boards were laid out end to end, I placed an additional two by six board parallel to the rails just outside the joint. This board is called a scab. I know, terrible name but it will strengthen both ends of the hinged side rail and give me a way to lock the rail straight when it's in the down position. You'll see what I mean in just a few minutes. With the scabs clamped in place, I marked the location for heavy duty gate hinges. I pre-drilled into the side rails and secured the hinges using beefy two and a half inch long screws. We also found the angle which the side rails were going to sit in relation to the floor and marked the bottom edge accounting for the three inch casters that we were planning on using. We found that the ladder was going to sit around 29 degrees off square. So I took the rails back over to the miter saw and trimmed the ends. Liking what you see? Tag that like button down below. And if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe as well. I was way too cheap to come up with the money for a real library ladder hardware set. So I decided we could modify the steel J-shaped rope hooks that I found. We pre-drilled into the edge of the top of each rail and secured the steel J hooks using two and a half inch screws. Next, we needed to figure out the rungs or steps of the stairs. Using the J hooks, we hung the side rails on the black pipe railing. We made sure that the bottom edge was parallel to the floor and used three inch spacer blocks to hold them temporarily. We clamped the rails together with the spacer block in the middle to account for the space that the hinges took up. 
I decided the best way to mark the rails so that all the treads were sitting exactly at the same 29 degree angle was to make a quick little jig. Then at that point, marking the tread heights was really easy. I used a level and a tape measure to mark the vertical heights on the side of the rail and then aligned the top edge of my jig so I could make a horizontal pencil mark. Using a speed square, it was easy to extend the line of the marking onto the other rail. This way I was assured that my treads would line up across both rails horizontally. We then unclamped the side rails and laid them back down on the ground so we could start adding the treads. Starting at the bottom, we began to align the treads between the side rails using the markings that we had made with the jig as reference. We then pre-drilled from the outside of the side rails into the treads and secured them in place using glue and three and a half inch heavy duty screws. We needed a surface wider than the inch and a half thick two by six rail to mount the rigid casters to. So we used more glue and screws to attach blocks to the outer faces of the bottom ends of the rails. We could then attach heavy duty three inch casters using two and a half inch screws. At this point, I could finally address those lovely sounding scabs. With the staircase up on its side, I centered one of the two by six scabs over the hinged joint. I added wood glue to the top half only of the scab and flipped it into place. I then connected the scab to the side rail using two and a half inch screws. We then placed an additional spacer block on top of the scab towards the bottom end. I then used a 3 8 inch diameter drill bit to drill all the way through the block, the scab, and the side rail. We then inserted a clevis style hitch pin through the hole, which will serve as a locking pin, ensuring that the ladder can't fold while it's down and being used. I removed the hitch pin and proceeded to attach the spacer block using my good old two glue trick. If you're ever building in a hurry, a great tip is to use both wood glue and a quick drying CA adhesive like DAP Rapid Fuse. First, apply your Weldwood Carpenters glue to the surface like usual, and then follow up with a few drops of Rapid Fuse. The Rapid Fuse grabs the wood almost instantly and cures within 30 seconds. It basically works as an integrated clamp holding your pieces together while the wood glue has time to fully cure. I lined the spacer block back on top of the scab, making sure that the 3 8 inch hitch pin hole was still aligned. I then clamped everything together and secured the block in place using more 2 1⁄2 inch screws. We added an additional scab, spacer block, and hitch pin to the other side of the staircase, and it was more or less done being built. We moved it over to the loft so it could be lifted into place. Let's be honest though, Bryce did most of the lifting and honestly, this thing is heavy. Way to go, honey. With the stairs in place, I gave them their inaugural climb and I was thrilled to death to see that there was no flex in the hinges and the entire staircase felt very solid. Now it was time to make this bad boy mobile. As soon as we went to slide the stairs across the rail, we discovered a problem with the J-hooks. The curved end hung over the rail too much and was interfering with the handrail brackets. Luckily, this was an easy problem to fix. Bryce grabbed our new Ryobi HP angle grinder and climbed up into the loft. Since the angle grinder is cordless, it was a quick job to nip the ends off the J-hooks. When I was designing the stair system, one of the hardest things to do was to come up with an affordable way to lift the stairs. After a lot of looking around, I finally came upon this $15 gambrel and pulley system. I purchased what's called a gambrel and pulley system. It's normally used by hunters when they catch big game and they need to lift them up to, you know, gut them and bleed and all that stuff. The nice thing about it is the system is rated for over 450 pounds, so it should handle our staircase just fine. The system pretty much consists of a long bar that helps distribute the weight of whatever you're lifting up and two separate pulleys. I think these are considered double pulleys because they have two separate wheels. I don't know that much about pulleys, but that's what I have seen and there's two of them. And what that will do is when the rope is strung between the two of these in sequence, it will help distribute some of the weight and make it easier to pull up. At least that's the idea from a little bit of research I've done on pulleys. We used a laser to transfer the location from the ground up to the ceiling of the shop. 
Bryce then drilled a hole in the ceiling to account for an eye bolt. We attached the eye bolt in the center of a two foot long spanner made from a thick wall perforated steel tube. The spanner could then be securely attached across two roof trusses. Back down on the ground, just above the center joints, I pre-drilled into the side rails. Then on each rail, I twisted in a quarter inch by three inch screw eye. In my opinion, twisting in screw eyes is one of the few things that a flathead screwdriver is good for. Flathead screws are the devil. I clipped a 250 pound carabiner onto each screw eye, and then it was time for us to start figuring out the pulley system. I'll be honest, the pulleys that we bought are not the best quality and they're definitely not something that I would want to use every day, but they'll definitely function in our application and they were pretty easy to string together in sequence. We originally used the cheap quarter inch nylon rope that came with the system, but you'll see later in the video, we ended up swapping that out for something a little bit better quality and easier to hold. We attached the pulley system to the screw eye up in the ceiling and then clipped on the gambrel to the carabiners and hooked on the pulleys. At this point, it was finally time to test out the hoist. As you watch me struggle, you can probably tell that it was a little bit harder to lift the stairs than I was expecting. Bryce was able to lift it up just fine, but my weak little soft hands just couldn't pull on that rope efficiently enough to get it up all the way. The size and dimensions of this specific staircase are kind of unique to our shop, but if you guys would be interested in the free building plans, let me know in the comments below. We took a day or two to think about what we wanted to do, and in the meantime, we moved on to the folding mechanism. The folding mechanism was pretty straightforward. It involved attaching two smaller screw eyes to the back side of the top tread of the stairs. We then tied the end of a length of rope to one of the screw eyes and added a pulley to the second. We added another pulley to the back side of the bottom tread and began to string the other end of the rope. We ran the rope up through the top pulley and gave ourselves plenty of length to come back down to the ground. Not only was the new diamond braided rope that we swapped out easier on the hands, it was still nylon, which means we could seal the ends using a lighter. As we did some research, we realized that we had lots and lots of different options to help assist the hoist of the staircase. The easiest option definitely would have been to purchase an electric winch or even a gear assisted chain hoist. But even entry level models are still kind of pricey and we were trying to stay on a budget. With the insane cost of building materials right now, we opted to go the manual route and found a hand crank trailer winch that was on sale for $25. We mounted it directly to the wall behind the staircase using quarter inch lag screws. We also chose to add a dock style rope cleat to the wall to be able to tie off the end of the rope when it's not in use. There's gonna be a lot of force applied to the handle of the winch. So we decided to use new tank bond thread locker by DAP products to make sure that the handle or the nut weren't going to slip on the bolt. There's several different tank bond thread lockers for different applications, including both a permanent and a removable formula for metal on metal use. I applied a bit of the blue removable thread locker to the bolt end of the worm drive of the winch and then added the handle and a lock nut. I've used other brands of thread locking products before, but the thing I love the most about the Tank Bond thread locker is its thicker no drip gel consistency. I was able to apply the product exactly where I wanted it with a lot less mess. Once the thread locker was cured, we gave the winch a test spin and I immediately discovered that it was slow, depressingly slow. I don't have all day to stand around cranking this thing, so we decided to ditch the handle altogether. I wiped off the bolt and I applied a little bit of the red permanent tank bond thread locker. I then flipped the little C-shaped washer thing over and screwed the lock nut back on. I decided to go all Izzy Swan up in here and power the winch using a socket attached to a brushless Ryobi drill. I think this is the point where I'm supposed to grunt and say more power. The very last step before we could wrap up this project was to put four inch wide grip tape onto each of the stair treads. You may have noticed the stairs are a little bit steep. I felt like I would be a little bit more secure going up and down the stairs with my hands full if there was less of a chance of my feet slipping on the wood. Also, the grip tape just looks cool. Well, I actually lied about the grip tape being the last step because the first time I climbed up the ladder, I discovered the squared off ends of the side rail were a little sharp and kind of scary. Luckily, I recently received the new Ryobi HP cordless multi-tool to try out. 
Multi-tools are definitely handy little gadgets for the DIYer to have around. Just like the rest of the Ryobi HP line, the multi-tool comes with a powerful brushless motor. It also runs on the same 18 volt one plus battery platform, which can be switched out and used on over 175 different Ryobi tools. As someone who's not super organized and constantly losing everything, I really appreciate being able to switch out the attachments without having to use a special tool. The variable six speed dial allows me to adjust the oscillation speed depending on what material I'm trying to cut or finish. I used a wood cutting blade to lop off the top corners of the side rails and then rounded them over using the triangular sanding pad. Ready to see the final staircase in action? Luckily, most everything that we keep in the loft is long-term storage. So that means most of the time, the staircase is going to be folded and stowed away. By adding two pulleys to the folding mechanism and using the worm drive winch with a drill, I can fold up and put away the staircase all by myself, even with my weak little hands. To help increase the safety a little bit, I do have a couple of ideas for a foldable handrail, which I plan on adding later. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, our rolling folding staircase also glows in the dark. If you like projects that can transform, I recommend you check out my ultimate adjustable sawhorse video. And if you like other types of DIY content, check out this video as well. We've got all sorts of new DIY projects in the works, so make sure you're subscribed to the Pneumatic Attic channel so you don't miss a thing. And as always, thanks for watching, guys.